A Beijing-based robotics company, Robot Era, just unveiled a new humanoid robot called Model Q5. Not only does the Model Q5 walk and talk, but it can also make your favorite toast, dish out food, handle delicate objects, and interact with its environment. As if that's not enough, another set of robots in China took to the football field. Let's just say their performance was more like a drunk toddler than Cristiano Ronaldo. So on one hand, we've got the future of humanoid service robots, and on the other, we've got robo-athletes face-planting on the pitch. However, both of them tell us something powerful about the future of AI, robotics, and human-machine collaboration. Let's start with the skilled one. Meet Q5. No, that's not a new Audi. It's Robot Era's latest humanoid robot. And while it looks like something out of a sci-fi movie, it's real, fully functional, and designed to work with humans in real environments. Developed in Beijing by Robot Era, a company that's barely a year old and was founded in August 2023 with backing from Tsinghua University. Yet they've already shattered expectations with Q5, a 165-centimeter tall, 70-kilogram humanoid featuring a slim waist, narrower than an iPhone. It stands out in both form and function. It's engineered not to just look human, but to move and interact like one too. And when I say move, I mean we're talking 44 degrees of freedom. That includes 11 in each X-hand light robotic hand, matching human fingertip precision. Each hand can lift 10 kilograms and respond with lightning speed, 10 microclicks per second. You know how clunky robot arms usually are, right? This one reacts 10 times a second. It's got force-controlled joints for safe, compliant contact. They can handle fragile objects and still power through heavier tasks. Think wine glasses, eggs, and watermelons. Its arms impress too. Seven degrees of freedom bionic arms span 1.38 meters and can stretch over two meters to reach shelves or low spots. The legs aren't left behind, each with three degrees of freedom to squat, bend, or step, making routine tasks like lifting bags, pressing buttons, or folding quilts feel effortless. And it's not just about hands and arms. This thing moves with purpose. The navigation employs fused LiDAR and stereo vision, all packed inside a compact 582 by 519 by 225 millimeter chassis. Thanks to these features, Q5 can navigate cluttered indoor environments, avoid bumping into furniture or people, and do all this on its own. Q5 darting through a busy mall or hospital corridor? That's the new normal. And get this, its voice system isn't a canned script. Instead, Q5 is powered by large language models. It's also context-aware, meaning if you ask it something, it doesn't just spit out a robotic response. It understands what you're asking, why, and how to keep the conversation going. Q5 recognizes 37 languages and speaks naturally in warm tones, especially helpful when interacting with children or seniors. Do you need someone to guide tourists around a museum? Q5 can do that. Want a hospital assistant who can safely handle tasks and respond to patients in natural language? Q5 again. Powering all of this is the ERA AI platform, a full-cycle embodied AI setup. This system lets the robot learn from your control data and improve itself over time. It starts with teleoperation via VR headsets and sensor gloves, capturing your every movement. Then it processes the data, trains models, executes simulation tests, deploys to the real world, and validates through feedback. The result? Q5 learns and improves, just like a human trainee. That's closed-loop learning. It doesn't just perform, it evolves. This means you can remotely control and train it for specific actions. Besides, it can run for over four hours on a 60-volt supply, making day-long service shifts in commercial spaces realistic. But Q5 isn't even Robot Era's flashiest project. Earlier this year, they showcased another robot, Star One, that pushed things even further. Star One has 55 degrees of freedom and speeds up to 3.6 meters a second outdoors, breaking the records of bipedal robots. It also features a powerful torque output of 400 newton meters. That's strong enough to snap most human appliances. But instead of breaking things, it's cooking. In a recent demo, Star One was shown using chopsticks to pick up dumplings, steaming buns, pouring wine with style, and even clinking glasses for a toast. And it did all this with Robot Era's other secret weapon, the X-Hand One. This robotic hand has 12 degrees of freedom, with sensors that detect heat, texture, and more. And here's where it gets fun. It also works with the Apple Vision Pro. In another demo, the same hand was shown performing precision inputs for esports level gaming. That's right, the same hand that's picking up soft dumplings with chopsticks can also click 10 times a second in a virtual game world. 
Star One is versatile, already testing performance on desert terrain at 8 miles per hour or 12.8 kilometers an hour, and showcases how dexterity, strength, and speed can blend into one humanoid platform. This isn't some far-off dream of humanoid AI, it's deployment ready. These robots are learning faster, responding smarter, and adapting to human environments with incredible accuracy. Q5 already has over 100 intent orders in collaboration talks, showing strong market competitiveness. By focusing on human-centric design, such as a slimmer waist for great posture, emotion-aware speech for empathy, and precision manipulation for delicate tasks, Robot Era is shifting service robotics from pure function to real connection. So what are the things to watch out for? Upcoming demos. You might see Q5 guiding children, pressing elevator buttons, or handling office supplies. New languages. Expect broader NLP capabilities in more dialects or languages. Performance data. How many shifts can Q5 do before maintenance? That runtime data is key. And broader use cases. With 55 degrees of freedom and 3D mobility, Star One could enter manufacturing, logistics, or even disaster relief. If you're into this kind of stuff where AI stops being code and starts being something you can talk to, work with, or even share a toast with, then go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And I've got to ask, if a robot could cook, clean, and help around the house, would you buy one? Or would it creep you out a little? Let me know in the comments. Alright, so that's the impressive side of humanoid robotics. Now, let's talk about the not-so-graceful side. While Q5 and Star One are out here performing 5-star hospitality tasks and mastering chopsticks, some other bots in China are still figuring out how to walk without falling over. And that brings us to one of the most unintentionally hilarious tech events of the year, the world's first autonomous robot football match. Yep, no remote controls, no training wheels, and no mercy. Just pure, slightly drunk-looking machine-on-machine action. In China, a company called Booster Robotics set the world abuzz by organizing the first-ever autonomous robot football tournament. That's right, no joysticks and no humans on the field. Just machines programmed to kick a ball and, well, not much else. Four teams, with three robots each, went head-to-head -head in what looked like a toddler soccer play session. But these toddlers had circuits. The bots wobbled, stumbled, fell, and got back up, again and again, trying to score goals that most resembled shots from a kid learning how to use training wheels. Sure, it might look like a small child playing dress-up. They're like drunk toddlers, quipped the Guardian. But behind every stumble was serious engineering. Each robot was fully autonomous, driven by onboard AI with no teleoperation. University teams from across China took part, writing algorithms to teach their bots foot tracking so that the bot could zero in on a ball under its power, balance control to keep upright while shifting weight, and strategy, deciding when to pass, dribble, or shoot. It's less about football glory and more about robotic resilience and real-time decision-making in unpredictable settings. It all came down to a 5-3 final match between Tsinghua University's THU Robotics team and China Agricultural University's Mountain Sea. Despite the chaotic theatrics of tipping over and aimless ball chases, THU Robotics pulled ahead with better ball tracking and goal strategies, showcasing how higher-level programming can outperform brute mechanics. A fan quoted in The Guardian said, They, THU, did really well. The Mountain Sea team was also impressive. They brought a lot of surprises. It's both a playful spectacle and a genuine research competition, one that reveals just how difficult real-world agility can be for autonomous bots. Behind the comedic falls lies serious science. Motion planning. Each robot had to process camera and sensor feedback, anticipate where the ball would be, and calculate joint motions all on the fly. State estimation. Onboard sensors enable them to know which way is up even after a stumble. Reinforcement learning. They learned through trial and error, gaining better navigation and balance over multiple matches. And multi-agent coordination. Even without explicit team communication, bots had to avoid bumping into each other during gameplay. That's foundational tech for future tasks like warehouse automation, urban search and rescue, or simply cleaning up a messy room without falling over. Here's where it gets interesting. Booster Robotics founder Cheng Hao said on stage, In the future, we may arrange for robots to play football with humans. That means we must ensure the robots are completely safe. It's a visionary goal bots that can operate safely around fast-moving, unpredictable humans. Imagine delivery robots playing out dodgeball with pedestrians or assistive robots carrying groceries while weaving through crowds. But before we crown a robot messy, there's a lot left to optimize. Speed, 
foot dexterity, dynamic stability, and that human-robot trust factor. Why does this matter? Learning from error. Robots refine stability through failure. Each fall is valuable data. Beyond labs. This move to public tournament settings introduces real-world complexity from uneven lights to slippery turf and scalable autonomy. If bots can learn teamwork and agility on the pitch, they could soon take on real-world scenarios like hospital delivery routes or automated construction tasks. The unpredictability in play helps the bots develop flexibility, navigating environments that don't follow perfectly scripted rules. What do you think? Should robots be allowed on your football pitch or anywhere near your home? Let me know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed both the polished finesse of Q5 and Star 1 and the chaotic charm of Robo Football, go ahead and like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell for more future tech that's as stunning as it is unexpected. Until next time, stay curious, and remember, the future may stumble a bit before learning to dance.